Women suffered a heavy eight wicket loss to go 1 0 down in their three match one day international series against Australia in Brisbane on Sunday. The wind is lost with 211 balls remaining in the encounter, having been dismissed for just 83 before the Aussies, led by Alyssa Healy with 30, reached 87 for two in their run chase. Healy Matthews was ruled out of the contest with an injury, and there is still a question on her availability for the second ODI, which comes up on Wednesday, and it will be live on Sportsmax. Standing captain Shemaine Campbell says the wind is just did not produce enough to win. On the board, it runs on the board, so we just go there and believe in ourselves, I know, and try to um, get a few wickets and try to take up some positive fun today. But unfortunately, we, um, we get some few wickets, but there's a lot of um, areas that we need to work on to improve our next game. Ali Allen going on, she bought pretty confidence in herself. She back herself and she go out and she plays some shots. And I think that was a plus for us. And also in the field, you know, I remember I bowled well. And um, all the ballers stripped in at different time, But the runs wasn't there for us, though, you know, um, that kind of. Yeah, a tough result there for the West Indies girls. Obviously, without Hayley Matthews, their batting strength, the, the team would have been at a huge disadvantage. Some younger players, Janava, Joseph, West Indies on the 19 players, Rashada. Zeta James, West Indies on the 19 players well getting a look in but um the Aussie is just too strong world number one seven time world champions um reigning world champions in ODI cricket the Aussies I feel it for Shemaine at that press conference because it's really really a tough thing to do to try to find positives and I saw her pulling at straws to the point she pointed out Karishma is bowling which was one wicket for 13 runs yeah. you know really really tough position but we have spoken about this on the show I think a lot last week and the week before Haley Matthews is the reason we have a competitive total when we do. A lot of the runs, if not all of the runs, are heavily dependent on the type of game that she has. For me, I expected again, and maybe I'm just expecting too much now, I was expecting Stefani Taylor to fill that gap, fill that void, um, because we didn't really have anybody else, Lance, that we could count on to say that we would get runs uh, on the board. So for me, once the batting fails, and I think this one was an embarrassing total to the point where, you know, people are forgetting the fight that the Windies woman had put up before when Haley was in the setup. And they're saying all sorts of things. So I'm hoping that the ladies can, of course, remember why they're playing cricket for West Indies, remember when they started to bat, and actually go up there with some sort of pride, put up a competitive total, because this score was embarrassing. Mm. Okay, and of course, uh, it is unclear yet whether Haley Matthews will be fit enough to play in the second ODI, which is Wednesday evening, 7.35 Eastern Caribbean time, 6.35 in Jamaica, and it will be live on Sportsmax. We are switching now to men's cricket. Six of the ICC World Cup uh, in India uh, ended with New Zealand. Day six ending with uh, New Zealand claiming victory over the Netherlands. This was match six. Batting first, the Kiwis posted 322 for seven of their 50 overs, with Will Young top scoring with 70, Tom Latham getting 53, and Rachin Ravindra 51. Three Dutch bowlers claimed two wickets each. Now, in pursuit of 323 for victory, the Netherlands were dismissed for 223, thanks to a five-wicket hole, five for 59 from spinner Mitchell Satner. Colin Ackerman top scored for the Dutchmen with 69. Uh, this is how the table looks after New Zealand's second win, top of the table, 2-0. Uh, they have maximum four points. South Africa, Pakistan, Bangladesh also with two points coming off their victories. So still early in the, in, the, in the piece and a lot of cricket left to be played there in India. Now, despite the good cricket on the field, there have been bad results at the gates with concerns about the underwhelming crowds at the World Cup in India. Games so far have had low attendance with Sunday's encounter between India and Australia in Chennai registering the best crowd so far, filling 87% of the stadium with 32,531 fans. Low numbers have moved uh, cricket lovers to question the 50-over format's existence. And joining us on Zoom to help us uh, probe uh, this issue, Fazir Mohammed. Not a completely new topic, Faz, the 50-over game and uh, where it sits at the moment against Test cricket and the fast-growing T20 cricket. Um, people fear that the numbers uh, in cricket mad India 
which are pretty low in attendance at the moment, would be suggesting something about the 50-over game. Indeed, Lance, and, and you're quite right. This has been a discussion that has been going on for more than a decade, yes. amplified, of course, by the growth of the T20 format and the number of leagues, because there's obviously going to be a saturation point, and I think we've reached it already. Uh, the fact that it is a World Cup and that you're seeing such sparse attendances isn't entirely surprising, because I think we need to recognize as well when you don't have the home team involved, as we had in the Caribbean in 2007, as we had in India, 1996, 1987, then again in 2011, when the home team is not involved, it, it's really pushing it to expect a full house to come and watch even some of the, the strong teams. It just doesn't work that way anymore because, again, they would have had their bellies full with IPL. They would have had so many other franchise tournaments to, to look at, and people will prioritize what they're going to watch. That said... Also, the, the BCCI are correctly being criticized because it was just a month ago that the fixtures were finalized. Think about it. Would we have a football World Cup or an Olympic Games where the schedule is finalized four or five weeks before the start? That makes it virtually impossible for visiting fans to plan their arrangements. India is a huge country. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's another factor. But I think in relation to the point about 50 over cricket, I think we're coming to that, that, that realization because a lot of people have commented on it already that one day cricket will only survive as a World Cup with qualifying matches in the intervening period that will be of, of the only relevance because there's so much T20 cricket being played and obviously if there's a desire to allow Test cricket to survive beyond the ashes, which is also questionable, then again, it looks like the days are numbered for these bilateral ODI competitions. Yeah, but, you know, bilateral ODIs is something that would have been questioned before. But as you pointed out, Faz, this is a World Cup and this is India that we're talking about. Point made about the um, late confirmation of the venues because, as you said, India is a huge place, huge gap between some of the venues. Um, Hyderabad, Ch Hyderabad, Chennai, there are a lot of different venues being used and uh, people would need to plan. But um, be beyond that, the 50-over game as a spectacle, is it that the game just isn't as attractive as it once was, given the fact that the T20 game is increasing, you know, at a rapid rate in popularity. Absolutely. And, and it, it probably confirms the American model of three, three and a half hours for a sporting event, whether it be baseball, whether it be NFL, whether it be NHL, whether it be NBA. Because think about it, Lance. Before T20, people were fine with one-day cricket, you know, because that was the limited option from five days to one day. But now you can go to a match in three hours, three and a half hours, and see an entire result, see a lot of excitement. And, and yes, the so-called purists and aficionados will turn their noses up and so on. But this is an entertainment product. And therefore, even for that match with South Africa getting 400 and change, or even for the India-Australia match yesterday. There was a period when after you saw that partnership between Kohli and KL Rahul settling things down, the match was over and you basically had to endure the next 20, 25 overs before they knocked off the runs. So, so yes, the format in the modern environment is a difficult one to be sustained from a, from a pure interest point of view. Mm. Art Faz, um, it, 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 it's got to be exciting, I think, and uh, because the Indians haven't won it in a while and they think they have a team good enough to win it, I do expect that the fans eventually will come out and uh, let's hope India gets to the final and uh, see them take it from there and uh, protect the legacy of 50 over cricket fans. <laughs> in, indeed, well, 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 some will say that the legacy is just about 50 odd years. It's the legacy of Test cricket and that, that's in danger, which is over 100 years, but that's for another time. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, fans, we'll talk in soon, I'm sure. Take care. Okay, back with more on The Zone after this.